morning to you all. It is good to welcome you to the service of worship on the seventh Sunday of Pentecost. Thank you for tuning in to worship and praise our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so pleased to have Reverend Tina Nees here on this morning. This may be the first time that you've worshiped with us at Grace Our Pulpit, and we're so looking forward to hearing your message this morning. At the administrative board meeting this past Tuesday, it was agreed we would actively move to the parking lot to worship on Sunday, July 26th at 9.30 a.m. There's a small committee meeting working on the specific logistics for this to happen, and information will be sent to you via the Keeping You Informed email blast during the upcoming week, so you'll know the traffic flow patterns, the specific space safety precautions required, parking, lawn chair seating, and other important information that you'll need to have. It was also determined that a recorded service will be provided for those who are unable to attend. We're eager to offer this op option for worship again at the United Methodist Church in Stowe. Let's pray for great weather, no rain. We're also excited to announce we will have a new phone system installed for our church. Our current phone system has been not functioning well. Since last fall, and if you remember, we were without the phone for about two weeks. It's been a long process, but we feel we've found the best phone for the best cost. It'll take a few weeks for installation to be completed and the system to be up and running. But we'll let you know when that all happens. Right now, we still only have one line that works. If you call and it just rings, hang up. Call again later, because that second line doesn't work. And call during office hours, also helpful. So now, time to prepare our hearts and minds for worshiping God and giving thanks for all that we have, for God's many blessings.
hear Pastor Knees talk about God being everywhere. He's above us, he's below us, he's beside us on every side, and he knows what's in us. He knows what we're going to say before we even say it. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? He sees us everywhere, even without super funky glasses. So, what I want to talk about is how we see God. We don't see him just by looking around. I mean, you don't look out your window and see God, do you? I don't either. But I do see God. I hear him sometimes when I hear Chelsea sing or Jeremy or I don't play the piano. Sometimes I hear him. Sometimes I see him. You know Mrs. Root, Mrs. Nadler, and all the volunteers who help in the food pantry, help people with groceries? Sometimes I see that when I see Mrs. Root and Mrs. Nadler, and they're helping people. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? So this week, when you're out and about, or just playing in your house, somebody you care about gives you a hug, Oh 
remember everyone listed on our prayer list that has been sent out regularly, in addition to Reverend Karen Droder, who needs our continued prayers. She reports that she is getting stronger every day, and we trust that she is. Rudy Capice is the 12-year-old son of Emily Barber and Christian Capice, and the grandson of Alan Debbie Barber. He had his surgery postponed last week until they can get him to gain more weight. Kyla Lee Greenleaf is the great-granddaughter of Barb Stam, and she is due, is due to have complicated and serious abdominal surgery on July 23rd. Megan Hayward, the daughter of our former pastor, Reverend Scott, is my Amy Hayward, who is recovering from her surgery this past Tuesday. And Mrs. Tony Cuccillo, who is Glenna Schindler's mother, is in a nursing home in Niagara Falls, New York, and has been uh, diagnosed with COVID-19. The church in our canal district for whom we are praying this week is Marshallville UMC and Re Reverend David Rickers. I invite you now to go with me in prayer to God. O oh God, unknown yet known, we come before you to hear more about who you are and what you are, and how that being of yours is expressed in our daily life, in our shared life as a community of faith, and as a complex world community. We pray for all this day who seem lost in darkness, the darkness of disease, uncertainty, worry, despair. God, unknown yet known, your beauty, grace, and love sometimes seem hidden from our view. Yet these attributes of yours are seen everywhere we look and are experienced each day and night throughout our earthly life's span. Remind us to be the light for others in these dark times. Remind us to see through the dark times to your light, ever shining, right, ever loving. Unknown yet known God, we celebrate with joy the exhilarating knowledge that your presence surrounds us so intimately, that your holy presence is within us, in our minds, our hearts, our physical and spiritual beings, that your holy presence really is above and below us, before and after and beside us. Oh, how wonderfully gracious you are, O oh God. We give you thanks for all that you have created, for claiming us, for sharing your love and light with us, and for giving us Jesus the Christ to remind us that the light can never be extinguished. It is in his name that we offer this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
our scripture this morning comes from Psalm 139. I know Reverend Karen had decided to preach on another part of the lectionary, but Psalm 139 is my all-time favorite psalm. Uh, apologies to those of you who like the 23rd Psalm. I like that one too. But Psalm 139 really captures for me our relationship with God. God who knows us from before we are born. God who knows our comings and our goings. The God we cannot, out, cannot outrun is the God whom we worship this day. So I trust that these words will bring some comfort to those of you who are struggling, some excitement to those of you who are looking for adventure, some promise for all of us that wherever we are, God is. I invite you to listen with me to these words from Scripture. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from you discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Here ends our scripture reading this morning. Let us pray. The words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I want you to think for a moment about the people who know you, who really know you. Who knows you best of all? Maybe a best friend, maybe a sister or brother, maybe it's your spouse or one of your parents. Think about that person for just a moment. How long have they known you? What secrets do you share with them? secrets do you keep from them? How well do you think they really know you? Do they know everything? I know when I think about the most intimate relationships that I have, there are still things about me that the other person does not know. Things they do not see about me. Feelings that I do not share. Thoughts that I keep to myself. I'm guessing the same is true for all of us. No one knows us or anyone Perfectly. Yet these intimate relationships are so important to us because we feel that when others know us and more importantly love us, it affirms our very existence. We are important to someone. In Psalm 139, we hear a strange and mysterious message. God knows us in a way that nobody else can or does. We hear that God is acquainted with all of our ways. God sees through those barriers we construct so meticulously and the personas we put on so well. God can see into the dark corners of our being and shine a light there, helping us to be filled with the Christ light. 
God knows us. And it is an incredibly intimate knowledge. The word in Hebrew for know that is used here is the same word that is used in Genesis 4 when we read that Adam knew Eve and conceived and bore a son. God knows us, you and me, intimately, personally, lovingly. Being known by God in this way provides a wonderful affirmation for each one of us. We matter in our lives. Our existence means something. For many people, this notion that God knows us so thoroughly can be of more than a little scary. Where we know ourselves and the darknesses that we hide from others, the dark, dark thoughts that beset our minds, particularly in the middle of the night. Yet the promise of this psalm is that even the darkness is not dark to God. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to God. Howard Thurman, that wise and compassionate theologian, preacher, professor, and Christian, called it the luminous darkness. God sees beyond the darkness that we might perceive within ourselves and others, and in God's knowing of us in this intensely personal and intimate way, God continues to love us. Despite the intensity, the intimacy described in the words of the psalmist, there is, however, a paradox, an irony even, that this psalmist knows well, and we ourselves also know well. Such knowledge is too wonderful for us, so high we cannot attain it. God knows us, and we cannot fathom someone who knows us that well and loves us. The experience of the intensity, the completeness of God's knowing of us is beyond even the psalmist, beyond ourselves. It is so high we cannot ever imagine it. I sometimes wonder whether it is our inability to connect with this God who knows us so well that is the cause of so much pain and anguish in the world, feeling disconnected from the intimacy of God's grace. We become anxious about our own identity and anxious about the world and the people around us. In this state of feeling anonymous or unknown, our anxiety causes us to turn away from God and also from each other. And then it is that we lose sight of the importance of what we do, that our actions actually do make a difference. The darkness of uncertainty, anxiety, fear can be so overwhelming We serve the God who sent the light to dwell among us. In his book entitled The Luminous Darkness, Dr. Thurman tells of an appendix to a term paper submitted by one of his students. That student was a deep sea diver and wrote this. En route to the floor of the ocean, divers first pass through the belt of fishes. This is a wide band of light reflected from the surface of the sea. From this area, divers move to a depth of water that cannot be penetrated by light above the surface. It is dark, foreboding, and eerie. The immediate reaction of the divers is apt to be one of fear and sometimes a sudden spasm of panic that soon passes dropping deeper and deeper into the abyss. Slowly the eyes begin to pick up the luminous quality of the darkness. What was fear is relaxed, and they move into that lower region with confidence and peculiar vision. Sometimes I wonder if that is what it is like to see with the eyes of the heart, the eyes of love, to see with God's vision. Luminous darkness. The message of God's presence in the world through Jesus the Christ is the light of the world. The message comes to us as God's way of affirming us and confirms the fact that God knows us so well and loves us anyway. Nothing is hidden from the one who created us. Through the light 
life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God goes beyond the darkness we experience and perpetuate and draws us into the intimacy of God's own life through the power of the Holy Spirit. In his letter to the Romans, Paul meditates on this reality, reminding the early Christians, all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Of course, like the psalmist, there is a grounded realism in Paul's meditation as he declares, now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. As Christians, we hope for what we do not see. The perfection not simply of our personal relationship with God, in which we discover experience and experience the full weight of God's love, but the very same renewal for all people, for all creation. In this matter, we need to be reminded that our relationship with God is intensely personal, but it is not private. The intimacy God has with each one of us is the same intimacy God desires to have with all of us, with all creation. In that same passage, Paul describes creation groaning and longing for the fulfillment of God's holy promises. And we too, especially in these times, groan as we wait. Our hearts break as well. The waiting is heavy for us. Our hearts break as we hear about people of color being treated less than important than white people. Our hearts break as we see images of children in cages at the border and families who are torn apart. Our hearts break as we read about the millions of people worldwide affected by this pandemic. Our hearts break as we hear of the discrimination affecting members of the LGBT community. Our hearts break as we hear stories of women and others abused and hearts break as we hear bad news again and again and again and we groan with longing for the promises of God to be fulfilled. Yet, like divers, if we can calm our fears and uncertainties, we will reach the point of luminous darkness. It can be more than a little difficult to be patient in the face of such disasters. It can be more than a little difficult to be a people of hope and love, yet this is who we are called to be. We are reminded week by week in this place of the intensely personal and intimate way God knows us and loves all creation. It is these reminders that we seek to be transformed into people who do not want to respond to violence with violence, but with love. It is here that we come to work on seeing and then reflecting the light of God's love for all of them. The reality is this. We hope for what we cannot see, and even in what we may not fully experience for ourselves, that God knows us, that God loves us deeply, that in Christ God has renewed all things, and through this Spirit we are drawn together in God's love. These uncertain times, these trying times, these tumultuous times, we need to remember that we are the light bearers in this world. We need to show others how to respond to the darkness and hate that threatens to take root and grow. Martin Luther King wrote, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So, know and believe the good news. You are known intimately and you are loved deeply. You are important. What you do is important. The light still shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Let us pray. Holy One who knows us and loves us, continue to draw us closer to you as children of the light and help us bring all the world with us. Amen.